Welcome back to The Garage, guys. Today we've got a very important video that's a must watch for everyone that's using our machine and utilizing Fusion as your CAM software. Recently, Fusion updated their software and the current post-processor that you may have installed no longer works. Uh, we've worked with Open Builds and Fusion to get a patch going for the new post-processor. We have that post-processor now uh, linked in our plan package and in this video we're going to show you how to install the new post processor also in this video we're going to cover a couple common issues that people are having trouble with the first issue is flashing the arduino well we've come up with a new method to flash the arduino that'll actually install the gerbil settings for you so we don't have to worry about you making data entry input errors or anything like that so a new method to flash the Arduino. The second thing we're going to cover in the, or the third thing we're going to cover in the video is uh, setting up the Z axis in Fusion. Some of the settings that you need to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, with the new post processor, some of the settings did change slightly. And uh, so we'll go through those things. So it's an exciting video. Jackson's going to take over and take you through what needs to be done. So for everyone that has the plans, you are going to want to go to Section 5, Electronics and Software, and you will see these two files. Everyone is going to need to download the OpenBuilds Fusion 360 post. And if you have not already installed the firmware on your machine, you will need to install the jdsgarage.ino.standard.hex, and it, we can also download this as well. And now that I have those two files downloaded, I can open up Open Builds Control, plug in my Arduino, and I go to Wizards and Tools, Firmware Flashing Tool. I can go to Black Box 4X, and my Arduino is connected to COM5. It may be different on your computer. And I want to upload the custom hex file. I'm going to click on Use Custom Firmware Image. And I can go to my downloads and that hex file already in my downloads folder since I downloaded it from the plan package. Open that up and click flash. Now we can see the flash is completed and I can connect to my controller on COM5. Now you can see I'm connected to JD's garage and all my Gerbil settings are already configured and the controller should be ready to use. So now that we have our firmware uploaded, now it's time to make an actual job. So now that we've got our firmware uploaded to our controller, we can go into Fusion and draw a part and cut it out. And keep in mind that everything you see here can still be done on the free version of Fusion. We have a personal account set up. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop a simple part. So I drew up this simple part here and it did give it some thickness as you can see just to make it easier to keep track of. So we're going to go over from design into manufacture. So now that we're in the manufacture area we're going to create a new setup. So I'm just going to right click new setup and with this yellow box is is the stock material that we're going to be cutting out of now we're plasma cutting so it doesn't really actually need to be the size that we think it's going to be uh, the important thing is is we make sure that this is on cutting and we know where this origin point is relative to our part so it's going to depend on how you like to do things but what we like to do is we like to put the origin point in the bottom left corner of the part, or if we have multiple parts here, we want this point in the bottom left corner. So what I'm going to do here is I can just zoom in on the one of these corners and just click on it. And what you're going to want to do as well is make sure that this is on the top, this origin is on the top plane of the box, or you, it's going to be causing issues for you. So you can see that it's on the top plane now. And then if you really wanted to, you can make your stock the size of 
whatever material you need to, but it's not necessary. And then in post-process, you're going to want to set this as 1. Now that we've got our setup done properly, you can see this green check mark. So now we're actually going to create the 2D cutting profile. Uh, we don't have a tool selected, so we'll just make one. So we're going to go add a new tool, plasma cutter. Um, we'll just call it the test tool. Under cutter, we're going to need to know our nozzle diameter and our kerf width. Under holder, none of this information is necessary. You could fill it out if you want to. Under cutting data, feed rates and heights are also necessary. I'm just going to leave these as default for now. Uh, process inputs are not necessary, and the post processor tab is not necessary either. And we'll just select that. Now that I have the tool made and the tool selected, I can go to geometry and I can just cut that face out. Our heights. These are th so if you're using the Z axis, these heights are important. You will need to know these. So the clearance height is the, when you first start the job, which is this orange box here, that's actually the height that the torch will start out at. And then the retract height is every time it's done doing a cut, move back up to that height and then make its travel move and then come back down before it starts a cut again. And then the top height is your actual cutting height. So my cutting height is 1.5 millimeters. I still need to fill that out based on how the post processor works. Um, I'm just going to leave these two as default for now. You're going to want to set them to your preference. So under passes, we can leave our tolerance set. The sideways compensation, we're going to want to leave this as left. And what left will do is it'll cut, it'll keep the torch on the outside of outside edges and inside of inside edges. So Fusion is able to detect which one's an inside edge and an outside edge. If I hit right, it'll cut the opposite, and then center will cut directly on top. I want to leave that as left. And then compensation type, I want to leave as in computer. And then if I turn on smoothing, it'll help reduce the sizes of your G-code files and just make things run better. And next, we're going to go to linking. And since we're using the Z-axis, we don't need to have the keep nozzle down. And we're going to give it a lead in and lead out. And now with the new post processor and the new version of Fusion, we don't need pierce clearance anymore. It's We could set that to zero and it doesn't really mean anything anymore. And hit OK. And now we've got our green check mark. And you can see the toolpath and the simulation. So now we can simulate the machine and we get a nice view of the torch and a timeline. So you can see the travel moves in yellow and you can see uh, that very top height that we had. So when it starts and ends the job, it'll end there. And then our retract height, you can see we don't retract all the way to the top. We just retract enough to clear the nozzle. So I can exit the simulation, and now it's time to turn these toolpaths into G-code. So now that we have the toolpath generated, we can go to post-process, and that will actually turn these toolpaths into machine-readable G-code. So we're going to go to post-process. And we'll select post from library. We're going to go to local, import. And in our downloads, we have that post processor here that we downloaded from the plan package. And that's the post processor that we're going to select and use. Now, if you've already done this in the past, you will most likely have to do this again. With the March 25th, 2024 update, 
uh, Fusion 360, all of the previous post processors that we've told you to use in the past will no longer work and you will have to update this again. And if you haven't had any issues yet, there is a two week grace period on Fusion. So by April 8th, you will start running into this problem. So now that I have my post processor selected, I'm going to set my spindle on off delay to 0 0.6. Now I know that it says spindle on off, but that's the same thing as uh, pierce delay or pierce time. And since we're using the z-axis, we're going to use the z-touch off probe routine. And under here, this is the probe offset. So by the time or when the torch actually touches the metal, there's still some distance that has to move before the switch is clicked. And that's what this number is. Generally, we see around 3 millimeters or so. With, we're going to give this a name. We'll just call it Demo. And our output folder, I'm just going to save that to the desktop. If you want to change it, you can see that here. And then I'm going to post that. You can see our post was successful. So now we can move to open builds. And I can open that very same G code that we just made. So in our desktop, our demo is here. So what this warning is, is basically you, you accepting that you understand where the zero coordinates are on this job. And you can see that this looks pretty much the same as it did in Fusion. And you can see my torch is way over here, but if I hit set zero, it'll bring that back to zero. Even if I jog it in any direction, if I hit set zero, it'll bring that back to zero. Now that's how you draw your part and turn it into readable G code for your machine to cut out. All right, guys, thanks a lot for sticking around to the end of the video. We really appreciate it. Um, for those of you that are having trouble with Fusion or would like another option so we won't have to go through this again if Fusion updates, uh, we'll be put it, putting out another video in the next couple days about an alternative to Fusion if you'd like to use that. So with that, make sure to like and subscribe.